can't make music in a shed. Yeah, that's how I do. <laughs> Sounds primitive, doesn't it? The whole gang. I get Alex to get on a get Alex to get on a documentary. Freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. Come on, set him a beat, come. Set him a beat. Freestyle right now. Yeah, come on. What's going on? It's Fraser XVII, aka Young Suburb, aka Suburb Boy, aka Playboy Country, aka FRA to the Z E R. You dig? And I'm here to talk about the shed. Apparently, <laughs> I'm here to be talking about the studio which we keep calling a shed for some reason, but it's definitely not a shed. It's bespoke. <laughs> Young Suburb is basically like a, a whole a whole ideology that me and my brother are coming up with. Because this is where we're from. We're from the suburbs, we're from the countryside. And a lot of people are going to hide away from that in my area. Like A lot of people like, will call themselves, yeah, I'm, I'm from South London. I'm really like, we're, we're outside the M25. We're, like, I live in Surrey. I had some clothing lined up, but like it all just... I want to get it right, you know what I'm saying? So uh, keep your eyes peeled for the clothing. The clothing's in the pipeline. However, the merch, I've got XVII merch. You know what I'm saying? Maybe don't go too close to that because it's a prototype. <laughs> <laughs> merch is on the way. Actual phrase of merchandise. I think hopefully some people are interested about that. If not, then I'm going to wear it. I don't care if you do. The whole shed thing actually happened maybe even before I was recording myself as, as such because it came about when I was just making music too loud in the house. I built it with my granddad um, and my brothers were helping out as well. We did it over a summer one time. I can't even remember what summer it was. Probably about three years ago. Yeah, we just put it together. I took a little bit of time doing all the walls. We basically built like a room inside of a room with an elevated floor and everything. Took a lot of wood. And then, and then obviously things came over time. Like I started recording in here. Originally it was just for... No, a space for me because I was being too loud in the house. I had the, just these rocket speakers at the time and I was just being way, they're obviously massive speakers to be having in your bedroom like and my nan and granddad are the room below me. It suits me a lot because I like to be on my own. <laughs> I just do everything on my own because I'm so self-sufficient. I'd be, I'd be uncomfortable with loads of people in the room. That gives me the most amount of time to be able to to be able to actually refine everything that I'm doing down to a T because I feel like a lot of people when they're in the studio of other people, ah, oh, that will do, that take will do. Even though the, the people might not be caring if they're, if they're taking a long time, in their heads they'll still be thinking, yeah, I don't want to be annoying everyone that's in the studio right now, that take will probably do. But then in doing that, you're not getting the best result you can get. So I'll sit in here and I'll do takes where I, like, I will replace like the first quarter of even a word that I'm saying just because I don't know the tone of that word. And I can do that because I'm doing it myself and I can just take takes and takes and takes and takes and takes. A lot of people probably think you do like a verse in one take, but it's never the case. So the first take I'll do, I'll like freestyle everything. I freestyle the melodies then I'll put words to it. But when it comes down to it, I would have known what sounded best when I was freestyling. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just some mood. I don't know about you, like what, what, what do you listen to? Do you listen to lyrics or do you listen to melody when you're listening to a piece of music? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course, to a, to a degree, everyone listens to it, all the aspects. You can't really help that when you're listening to a song because the, the whole song is playing. What you focus on mainly is, I think, what defines what you like. So, like, I, I focus on melody a lot more. And even though, like, in my music, I focus a lot on lyrics because I want people to be able to appreciate good lyrics as well. That's not even what I'm listening to. Even when I'm listening to my own music back, I won't, listen, won't be listening to the, the lyrics. I'm listening to the melodies. It would have always been the same in terms of what I like because that's the type of music I like. That's that's why I started making the music that I make because it's my preference. I'm trying to make music that I like myself, although it doesn't always happen. Years ago, when I first started, I was making beats, so I probably would have tried to make a beat myself. But these days, I'm getting sent beat packs from producers and stuff like that. Although I can make my own beats, I prefer to use other people's beats because otherwise you're ticking over the same beat, making it over and over again. You've heard it a million times, and then I can't be bothered to do any, anything on it anyway because I could just get bored of it. Usually, Cushy Cooks. Like, that's my, my main guy now. Like, we're, we're good mates. So, yeah, people send me a beat. I'll try not to listen to the beat. Obviously, I have to make sure the beat's good, so I'll probably play, like, five seconds of the intro. If it's a producer that I know that is good with the drums every time, I'll load it straight up into Logic, literally hit record, and then just freestyle whatever comes. Although, a pr another foolproof method for me is 
I'll come up, like, I'll be in the car or something, I'll come up with, like, a sick hook, like a wavy hook. This is how all my bangers are made, to be fair. I'll come up with a wavy hook, I'll, I'll record it into a voice note, and then I'll try and apply that. So, like, if my first portal call, which is a freestyle, doesn't come off when I record, I'll then go to my phone on my voice note. So anyone that applies, like, that, that fits the key or whatever, that fits the key of the tune, um, then I'll, I'll record that on top, see if it fits, and then I'll finish the song. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I do all the mix, well... Yeah, recently actually we've been we've been sending it between each other and, and he's been doing a bit of vocal mixing as well. But yeah, um, inherently I'll, I'll, I'll record all my vocals, then I'll mix it, then I'll master it. So it's, yeah, all, all the producers are doing just send me the beat. Yeah, pretty much. How do I know if it's the one or not? Uh, <laughs> it's a good question because a lot of songs aren't the one. And a lot of songs are the one, and I think a lot of my songs are the one, but only because I only release the ones that are the one. Yeah, because I'm I, I'm so self-critical. The image that maybe I portray on like Instagram or something, if you were to look at me on social media, is like I'm well confident, possibly even cocky. But uh, yeah, I'm proper self-critical, very self-doubting, very often to the point where like I've got self, I've got like belief in myself now. Obviously, as a as a result of the proof that I've seen um, from feedback from people. They like my music. Like there's people that just like my music and that's good that I know that now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing is with Cushy as well, like if I send him something, he will tell me like, nah, that's that's actually dead. And obviously if I send my brother something, he'll tell me. I'd show my other brother some some stuff as well, but um me and Taylor do it mainly because he's making the artwork and everything. Yeah, he'll tell me like, yeah, I don't think I don't quite think that's your best. Or he'll tell me that's not single worthy. Like that's that's usually what my little brother will tell me. He'll be like, yeah, put that on a project if you want to release it, because like, it's not single worthy. And I'll know if it's single worthy or not. Like, I know the ones that are single worthy. <laughs> Yeah, so this is Gigi. This guy that I met on Instagram, I've, said, I've met him one time at work actually. He came in, he came through the airport where I work. And uh, I just ran him and saw him, he was like, Oi, it's you. And then he was telling his mates about me. Like, but yeah, he's actually wavy, like, he's probably one of my favourite artists I know in London. Will you hold me down? Maybe tell me you play for. I'm telling you, like, there's, I just, there's just so many songs I just can't remember. Yeah, like, over the last, like, year or whatever, I've just been in here so much. And every time I come in here, when I record, I just, I just make a song. <laughs> I was born with these bags under my eyes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, like, trying to prove myself as an independent artist um, by, by staying that way. I'm open to things. I'm open to whatever works. Like I'm just open to to the formula, and at the moment the formula is working for me. Um, in terms of creating the music, maybe I need a little bit of help with uh, pushing pushing marketing and promotion and stuff like that. Yeah. Did you see my message about the about the show? Yeah, long, bro. Mm. Long. This Sorry. coronavirus thing has got actually got mental. Yeah, that's long, bro. Wait, did you see um, another person tag you in the <laughs> in the thing? Well, thinking it was me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in future, yeah, I'll just fucking send you the preset and then I'll send you the bread to it just because it just it makes so much more sense. You're doing it from your account. Yeah, I suppose, but the other thing is, like, if it's coming from multiple accounts, it looks like it's, it looks, yeah, it's more like, than just me doing the things. No, I do, I do. It's probably mm. not bits, but it's done like 40k. Mm. He basically put on, like, a sponsored post of, uh, for, for me, like, of, of my thing, and people have been messaging him thinking it's him, it's his song. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yeah, but still, it's got you followers as well, and it? it's got you like 20 followers. <laughs> Obviously, like you've got like the whole Russ thing. He said like, oh yeah, I've made everything. I've I've made it up from the ground myself. Blah, blah blah. And he always pushes that in anything he's ever talking about. He's got so much like pride to the point where it's like arrogance. Yeah. But for me, like I do all that stuff. I do everything that he's done. It's just that. Uh, no, I just like I just, I just want to get the, the product sounding good. Oh, you're talking about people who like sign sign a deal that they regret. Yeah. Oh, okay, 
So I was thinking more like people who people don't who don't accept help. I was I was talking the other way around, like so people who don't accept help and then they're, they're on their own, but like they're not even sounding that good. I'll just go with the, with the formula I think is working in terms of making good music, and any any, any help that comes along, I'll, I'll assess it at the time. I'm not opposed to it. Like goals. Yeah. So 2019 was the year I started releasing music. I, I wouldn't say I had goals, but I had things that I thought would happen along the way. Like where, so, say I released Stepping Stones in February. That's the only thing that I didn't really have a prediction for because it was my first thing. I was on SoundCloud before that, but I was like still practicing type thing. I released Led Astray after that, and me and my, brother, me and my brothers were like, "Yeah, Led Astray is probably gonna flop." But then I've got this other tune after that, and like your hands, that's probably gonna do a lot better because like, like girls are like it. it's a smoother one type thing. People will share it about and that. That exactly happened. I wouldn't say Led Astray flopped, but stream-wise, it hasn't. It's done what I said it would like. And then everything after that just sort of happened as we predicted it. Like we predicted like how things would do and why we we would release them in that order. And it all just happened as I as I expected, kind of. So hopefully it just carries on like that. I do need to set more goals. That's that's one thing I do need to do because at the moment I'm getting like backtracked. I should have had more songs out by now. Although. I say that and then I've, I've, I actually have got songs out, but they're just like the collaboration songs, like the, the Fortnite thing. I can't knock myself too much. I, maybe the self-criticism goes a bit too far sometimes. Yeah. And I released that thing on Instagram, that, that letter to my future wife part one. That kind of counts. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, that settles it in my mind and I feel better about myself. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking like, yeah, this is, I'm going to make this for so they can listen to and they can enjoy. Like, it was more, as I was making it, I was realising this is all kind of about one thing. I might as well tie it together now. Like, yeah, that's, that's how I started, yeah, like, probably about three songs in, I was like, yeah, there's a, a repeating pattern here. So I might as well just follow it through. So I made the whole EP because um, it was about, like, one one situation in my life. But whoever it applies to, they can take whatever from it. And even if you're not, even if it doesn't apply to you, uh, you can still enjoy the music. No, I can only judge the target audience as, as a, yeah, I can only judge the demographic as like, as it comes. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. You were saying really controversial. Or people have a problem with it. Yeah, like, no, no, the weird thing about autotune is like, it's, it's used way 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 more than you probably imagine ariana grande you probably think she's a sick singer now she doesn't use an auto tune her voice will be pitch corrected probably in like melodyne or something like that which is a, a manual pitch correction technology there may be a couple of exceptions but everyone that you probably think is singing and is and it's because they're a good singer their voice is still pitch corrected because there is a standard that otherwise it will sound weird in terms of like what's popular i don't know why everyone slates auto tune so much i'm using it as a tool like i can sing i can stand there and sing for you and hit some notes on that but look, <laughs> I'm not even standing, I'm kneeling on the edge of a chair, but yeah, I could stand it, I could, I could literally like sing some stuff and it would and it would sound all right. But I like the way auto-tune sounds, I just like the way it clicks and, and the way I can work with it. Exactly, like there's a lot, oh, I don't know, it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to even explain because you haven't done it. Like if you haven't done it, you don't know. And when you have done it, you're like, whoa. Yeah, kind of. Well, some people like don't know how to use it. Massively, you have to know how to use it because you need to know the way that it works and the way that it clicks each note to the nearest note. And you need to know what notes you're trying to hit in the first place. If you haven't got any idea and any aim, you're still going to sound awful with autotune. You need to be able to sing to use autotune, but it does help you out by clicking you to the right note and you can change the amount that it's gonna, and the speed that it's gonna click you to that note. And that's what's gonna make you sound either like T-Pain, like a robot, or maybe like someone who doesn't sound like a robot, I don't know, that uses auto-tune, like me.